belongs to him. Father, we praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, prepare your hearts. Prepare your hearts and your minds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prepare your heart and your mind today for the word of God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. We thank you for your mercy. Father, we even repent today. Father, we repent today. Father, we turn today. We turn. We turn our hearts back to you. Father, we pray for this nation. We pray for this generation. We even declare that this is the generation that shall seek your face. We pray that this shall be a generation that shall turn their hearts back to you. Father, we repent today. We turn back to you and we say, Father, Father, we seek your face. We seek your face. We seek your face. Father, your word declares that in the last days that you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And we declare today that your spirit will be poured out. Come on, open up, open up. Open up, open up. We declare that you will pour out your spirit pour out your spirit today in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Come on, this is our time of prayer and intercession. Come on, church. We must pray. I don't hear you, church. I need to hear the church. The saints of God, the Bible declares, when the church prayed, when the church prayed, we got to get back to a place of prayer, back to a place crying out to God, crying out to God for this nation, crying out to God for this generation, crying out to God for we need you. This is an hour we need you, Father. We need you like never before. Father, we need your heart. We need your mind. Father, we declare that this is an hour where the church shall arise. This is an hour, Father, that the church shall arise in boldness. The church shall arise in righteousness. Your heart shall be revealed in the name of Jesus. Father, we need you like never before. We cry out to you. We cry out out in the stress that you will answer us speedily that you will answer us speedily that you will incline your ear unto us father we need you we need you today we don't need entertainment we don't need performance but we need your spirit we need your spirit we need your spirit in the name of Jesus come on Come on, this ain't about a man. This is about a Lord and Savior. This is about Jesus. He's the only one that can deliver. He's about that name. Jesus, the only name by which man can be saved. Father, awaken us. Awaken us out of our slumber. Awaken us out of our slowfulness. Awaken us. Awaken us. Awaken. Awaken us. Awaken us. Awaken us. Awaken us. Awaken us. Awaken us. For this is an hour where the Lord has awakened us out of our slumber, where our eyes have become. Our eyes have become closed. We become numb to the spirit and the moves of God. But this is an hour of awakening. This is an hour where we must become sensitive to the spirit of God. 
There must be a sound in your belly. There's a sound in you. Beyond, beyond an instrument, you must become the instrument of the Lord. You must become the instrument of heaven. You must know you carry the sound of heaven on the inside of you. You are the move. You are the move. Father, let there be change in this nation. Let there be change in the church. Let there be change. Change us. Transform us. We don't want the same. We don't want normal. We don't want religion. But we want to. We want you. I'm not looking for a man. I'm looking for God. I'm not looking for a man. I don't just want an experience. I want encounter. I want encounter. I want encounter. I want encounter. Encounter. There's transformation. Lives are changed. There's deliverance. There's healing. Baby, be cool about Shabbat. Let there be a cry in the bellies of your people. A cry, a cry, a cry. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for your spirit. We thank you for your fire. We thank you, for God, that you are all consuming fire. Consume us, refine us, purify us, Father. Purify us, purify our motives, purify our agenda, that they come in alignment with your will. And we declare that your will be done in our lives. Your will shall be done in the earth. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that this is a culture of honor. We honor you. We honor your word. We honor leadership. And Father, we declare that this is a season of favor. This is a season that we shall increase in favor. Favor with God. Favor with man. Opportunities. Doors shall be open. We command doors to be open. We break every limitation. Every system designed and built by man. Be broken now. In the name of Jesus and we declare that the earth shall yield every resource we need yield now we declare that this is a fruitful season this is a fruitful season for we are planted our leaf shall not wither our leaf shall not wither your leaf shall not wither doesn't matter what season it is. Your leaf shall not wither. Fruit, fruitful, 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 fruitful. Every area of my life. Fruitful, fruitful. Fruitful, fruitful, fruitful. Every season. Every season, you shall bear fruit, fruitful. It don't matter what it look like. You shall bear fruit. You shall bear fruit. Be ba 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 shan bandara ba ba. 
you shall bear fruit. Favor and fruitfulness shall be your portion. Favor and fruitfulness. Favor and fruitfulness. Favor and fruitfulness. For this is a season where the Lord is hearing the cries of his people and his ear has inclined unto you. And this shall be a season of favor and fruitfulness. For you have endured the adversity. You have endured the obscurity. And get ready, my people. Get ready for a season of favor. Get ready for a season of mind-blowing favor. It shall be mind-blowing. For I'm the God that can do the impossible. What your eyes have not seen. What your ears have not heard. And neither have it entered into your heart. But I shall do it. Even those things that you haven't even prayed for. I shall answer you. I shall answer you. I shall reward you. Speedily. Speedily. No more delay. It shall not be prolonged. Any longer. No more delay. No more delay. No more delay. Speedily. Speedily. This is a season of speed. A season of speed. Speed. The wind of God. The wind of God. The wind of God is blowing you. Pushing you forward, 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 forward. Speed, acceleration, acceleration. The name of Jesus. Thank you for your word, God. We, your people, receive. And we say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Things will change when we call on that name. Great Jehovah, things will change when we call on that name. Great Jehovah, things will change when we call on that name. Great Jehovah. Things will change when we call on that name, Great Jehovah, Great Jehovah, Great Jehovah, Great Jehovah. Things will change when we call on that name, Great Jehovah. Things will change when we call yeah, on that name, Great
great Jehovah. Help me sing. Things will change when we call, yeah, on that name. Say, great Jehovah, great Jehovah. Things will change. Things will change.
Bless me now. 
my father I come Coming on my own behalf I come Coming boldly I come Coming humbly I come Come to 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 thee. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's me, oh Lord. <laughs> it's me, oh Lord. It's me, oh Lord. at your feet is me oh lord humble in your presence is me oh lord thank you thank you thank you it's me oh lord ready to receive from you ready for my pour from you ready for a touch from you it's me oh lord yeah casting off all restraints it's me oh lord yeah it's me oh lord is faithful that he'll be right there hallelujah ready to lead and guide us hallelujah he said he will never leave nor forsaken for that I give God praise thank you father hallelujah we don't even worry about who has left hallelujah who has not stuck around who was not there when you needed them it, it, it don't even matter because you have one that sticks closer than a brother hallelujah you have one by your side hallelujah that said he can't lie he can't and he won't hallelujah so i'm glad to serve a faithful god a god that has all that i need and more so i don't have to look or rely on another hallelujah thank you father this is why we need you this is why we need you. Hallelujah, you've never lost the battle. You've never lost the battle. You've never lost the case. You've never. Hallelujah, the Bible said we've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed having to beg bread. So I thank you. Hallelujah. For a father that can and will provide. For a father that will heal you, that will save you, that will change you. Hallelujah, that will open doors for you that will set you free hallelujah we thank God for a deliverer a peaceful God a mind regular 
late in God. Uh, one that can do everything but fail. Come on. Hallelujah. That kind of God, that's the one I need. That's the one I want. Hallelujah. Jesus. Woo. The one that sent his son to hang, bled, bleed, and die. That God. That God that can change any situation with just a word. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. No matter what it look like, no matter what it feel like, that kind of God. Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. I'm about to move out the way as the apostle comes to introduce the man of God, but I just want you to understand that we serve a God that has never lost and he never will. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never be defeated. Oh God, that's the kind of God we need. That's the kind of God I serve. And I won't apologize. this morning you ought to just give him a praise just to be alive come on through many dangers toils and snares look at somebody and tell him I made it Woo! hallelujah I made it glory to God glory to God glory to God Hallelujah. I made it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with praising him. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. And I'm telling you, it was your purpose that has kept you alive. Come on, somebody. You didn't make it just for nothing. Come on, you didn't come through what you came through just to be here for no reason. But your purpose is keeping you alive. And in the words of the woman of God, Apostle Catherine, purpose made me do it. But pro 
purpose also kept me to it. Come on, I'm sticking to it because of purpose. Hallelujah. Come on, you ought to let the devil know you can't kill me. My purpose is too strong. Woo! Hey, I'm so glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My purpose is too strong. Hallelujah. Woo. All right, all right, all right, all right. I feel the glory, but I feel that in my spirit. The Lord said to me that, listen, this is a season where the enemy is not only trying to just frustrate and discourage, and he has many different tactics that he uses to do this, but he, he, one of the things he's trying to do, he's also trying to get people to basically not just ignore you, overlook you, and some people are walking away from you. I heard the woman of God say, but can I tell you, your purpose is str so strong that even when folk don't want to believe in you, push you, support you, I'm talking about when you are down to just you and God, your purpose is so strong that the enemy cannot stop what God is about to do in your life. Come on, you ought to tell the devil you can't cancel me, baby. Woo, you can't cancel me. Huh? Woo. You cannot cancel me because you didn't order my steps. Hey, somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. telling you, I feel a Holy Ghost fit. I feel a Holy Ghost fit. Woo! Hallelujah. Yeah, you ought to praise him. You ought to praise him. Not only because of what he's done, but I prophesy you ought to praise him for what he's about to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for what he's about to do. My, 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 my. I'm telling you, you ought to praise him for what he's about to do because the enemy is defeated. Come on and clap your hands and glorify him. I feel this in my spirit. I'm going to act right. I'm going to do right. Hallelujah. I'm going to act right and I'm going to do right. How's that? Give him praise. Come on, if you're going to act right, you're going to praise him. If you're going to do right, you're going to praise him. I'm telling you, you can't listen. You cannot be canceled. Your purpose is too strong. It was not your alarm clock that woke you up. It was purpose. Purpose spoke to the clock. Yeah. Yes, that's I, Manso. I feel Jesus. And go ahead and let the devil know. I'm too strong for you. I feel a spirit of strength being released in this place. I'm too strong for the devil. If Jesus gave us power, he had all power and he gave it to us. The devil has none. And I'm excited, I'm excited. Listen, we honor the Lord this morning. Come on and clap your hands again and bless him. We praise God for Pastor Dia leading us and opening us and leading us and opening us up in praise and worship. We certainly praise God for Prophet Corey, amen, opening us up and creating a powerful atmosphere through the prophetic prayer. I feel this in my spirit and I'm telling you, God is doing some amazing things and I believe it without doubt. I felt that in my spirit that your purpose is so strong that there's nothing the enemy can do with you. And I'm here to tell you, listen, you need to start sending memos out in the spirit. Come on. And if you have to send them out even in the natural, let the enemy know. Let him know. I don't need nobody's permission to be great. Come on here. I don't need nobody's permission. I'm not, listen, I'm not asking you to uh, agree with me. Come on. It's, we're, we're entering into a season where God is getting ready to reveal to you not only himself, but your purpose like never before. 
and I'm truly excited about it. We truly honor the Lord. Listen, if you can and if you will, I want you to stand to your feet as we culminate this last Sunday where we have been just so blessed and favored to just be able to honor our very own Apostle Catherine Newsom. And she is in the building. This is her first Sunday back. She came in last night. But help me give God praise for the woman of God, for Apostle C, who has the testimony that through, listen, through it all, hallelujah, through it all, the Lord has brought her to this point. And so we honor you, woman of God, one more time, impact. Let's let her know how much we feel and how much we love her. We honor you. We thank God for you. This is the month that the Lord said that we are to not only teach on honor and favor, and we're also honoring our apostle who has, has just really been a blessing to us for so many years, and we are truly thankful, and we're just blessed, and I'm excited, and I'm thankful because not only is she uh, the, the spiritual mother of this house, but she is my wife, and I am truly uh, just honored and thankful for what God is doing in her life, so we thank God for you, woman of God. Welcome back into the house welcome back into impact and y'all know she back with the bang too right y'all know she ready right she is ready and so we're truly honored amen to be able to celebrate and, and continue to honor you and listen honoring our leaders never stop with just the time that we allot to do so in a particular time period, but we're certainly grateful. Listen, we also want to thank God for our very special guest today, and we are so excited to have Pastor Alvin Carlisle all the way from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, from the wonderful city of Winston and Salem, Impact Church, Winston-Salem. Come on, Impact, give it up for Pastor Carlisle. Hallelujah, we honor you, sir. We thank God for you. He is no stranger to this house. We certainly praise God for your wife in her absence. We praise God for Lady Stephanie. We are thankful that even she and her presence is with you. And we thank God that you guys are doing some amazing things in Winston. And we are yet to uh, just connect and push and give our two cents. But we are on our way. We come and we come and we come and we come. And, but we are so grateful for what God is doing. And he has a word. I believe he has a word for us today. And we're grateful for that. We are grateful. Listen, I'm going to get out of the way. We have just a few things that we're going to do before we bring the man of God up. And we're certainly excited again. Uh, to have him and he's going to minister to us but before he comes to minister again we just want to thank God for uh, our apostle and we have uh, Elder Jones who's going to come and she's just going to share some things and some words of inspiration uh, we've done that a few times this month as the Lord has led us and I'm just thankful listen Apostle Catherine for those of you who don't know she has uh, just such an amazing grace and gift on her life. She is no novice to ministry. Uh, she's been in ministry along with yours truly for over 29 years, be 30 years coming up and just truly honored to be able to serve with her. And uh, she and I have obviously been married for 32 years, been together for 42 years. Yes, we, we did everything but get born together I believe but you know <laughs> we started dating at 13 years old and uh, we have a man just kept it right in the road and I'm telling you I'm just so honored to be able to honestly say that I've had front row seat she's an amazing woman she has for years been uh, graced and and anointed to minister to women uh, she has uh, basically put on some amazing women's conferences over the years uh, for almost 25 30 years she has been ministering in that capacity she started some amazing businesses one in particular that you all may be more familiar with and that is it's Five Star Lady, Five Star Lady Corp. Come on, somebody, give God praise for Five Star Lady. And she has done some amazing things, uh, not just here in Goldsboro, but throughout this region. And I'm just great, uh, grateful to be able to say I had a front row seat. And she is so accomplished. Just give me a moment to share with you. This is a, an accomplished woman. See, sometimes we sleep on what's right in our midst, right? But she is one of the most accomplished women that I have ever seen. And not only is she anointed to preach the gospel, but she is well educated. Uh, she is an author of two books, two amazing books. Uh, truly thankful to see the uh, the author's grace and the penmanship that God has really uh, graced her with. And I believe we're going to have some books coming out within the next year. So listen, I'm, I'm her husband and her business manager. So I'm getting ready to squeeze the lemon. 
We're going to get it all out. Hallelujah. I'm going to retire and just work for her. Hallelujah. But she's so graced to do what she does. She is, uh, she has four degrees, three academically earned degrees, one from Winston-Salem uh, State University, a yeah, business and administration, got some alums here. Uh, she has a business uh, and administration degree from Winston-Salem. She also has a psychology degree from Westland College uh, that she earned a couple of years ago. And then she just recently graduated from Liberty University with a master's in human services counseling and she is a uh, I'm talking about mental health specialist man this woman is amazing and she also holds a honorary doctorate from Bible Faith University where she has an honorary doctorate in theology so she is well decorated I'm talking about she is decorated that's it celebrate Woo. that's what we're here for come on you we're here to honor her you don't put somebody on the fly and say you're honoring don't mention them right I want you to know there's a reason why we're honoring this woman of God. And I believe that we have just seen, I'm talking about just a, a surface of what God is going to use her to do. And I'm telling you, I believe that there's so much more. Apostle Catherine, I even speak prophetically that God has brought you. And I remember when we opened up this, this month, I, I was privileged to teach. But I feel that in my spirit, Esther, you are here for such a time as this. And I believe that without doubt, but I am truly honored because I I've watched her over the past few years, uh, even during the pandemic. She was writing books. She was literally in school. And then she went and she had a, a little physical challenge where she, uh, we thought it was best to go ahead and just rectify because of all the work that she has to do. And so she went and had a major surgery. And in the process of uh, even having the major surgery and then recouping, the woman continued her master's degree while she was sitting on her, I'm talking about sitting on her chair, flushed her pain meds said I can't do this because it makes me discombobulated and she flushed the medicine down the I mean flushed it flushed it and it's like you know I'm talking about champion like I'm finna I'm, I'm saying to myself I've been through that surgery right like I'm saying don't don't flush she flushed them and she kept up with every single lesson. She finished her work. And let me tell you something. She just didn't finish it, but she finished it with all A's. She is a cum something, cum laude, cum, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i talking about she just didn't graduate, but she graduated a cum something. I, listen, I'm, I'm one of those ones, I can't even say it. Cum laude, cum hotty, cum dotty. I didn't know if it was a cappuccino or what. I said, what, they giving you a cappuccino? What, what's that? <laughs> she was inducted into Liberty's Honor Society. And I'm saying, while she's sitting here recovering, dealing with pain, dealing with all of this, and dealing with all that, and mind you, she's still a wife, she's still a mother, she's still a, a helping pastor, and, you know, we sort of relieve her of her uh, certain duties so she can get certain things done. So I'm telling you, we have uh, an amazing gift in Apostle Catherine, and we're honored because the Lord really has blessed us with an amazing gift. And so, Impact, I want you to put those hands together again, and let's just thank God for all of your accomplishments, Apostle Catherine. And no, it's not, you may say, well, uh, that's not easy. Because if it was easy, a whole lot of us would have done it. Hello? And can I tell you, graduating in any capacity, in any form, it's an endurance process. You got to endure because life doesn't stop. Come on. That she couldn't call those uh, professors and say, listen, I'm having surgery. Uh, listen, can you just uh, give me a break? That work was coming. That work was coming. Glory to God. We were taking trip last year. We went to Africa to do some ministry in Africa. And here's how she rolled. She rolls. I mean, she rolls. She says, I'm going to do two, three weeks, uh, two weeks worth of work ahead so I can go to Africa and do ministry. She caught all of her work up two weeks in advance. And I'm sitting there. I'm, listen, I'm talking from a front row seat. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> Come on. 
And she just, I mean, boom, boom. Before she had her surgery, she did the same thing. She said, I'm going to do two weeks in advance worth of work. She went on her school board and got all her stuff down from the website and from the uh, thing that they send. And she did all the work two weeks in advance so she can go in and get the surgery. And then when she recoup and have a week to just come out of the surgery so she can get right back at it. And I'm talking about nothing but A's. And there were nights when she would write papers and stuff to my Lord, and, and, and she's, she's bouncing stuff off of me and, and Pastor Carlisle asking, you know, I, I wonder what kind of grade. And I'm saying, you know what kind of grade you're going to get. If you're going to turn it in, you know what it is because you're an A student. And so we're honored. If you want to really know and see, we have, and she has an academic achievement and just an achievement table. And not only with the degrees, she is certified in Simba's, uh, where she helps uh, literally those in marriage and, and relationships. She's certified uh, not only uh, a, a, a academically educated as a life coach, she's also certified uh, from uh, other programs that she basically went through as a life coach, but she is academic. I'm talking about equipped to really help and to empower. And I'm telling the ladies here at Impact, I'm telling you, y'all are just as dizzy and just as, I'm talking about you're dizzy if you don't take advantage of this woman of God. And can I tell you, when God sets an anointing in your life, it don't pursue you. You got to pursue it. <laughs> Woo, I just, I just broke something right there. You got to go after it. You got to be just like Mary. When that woman opened her mouth, you ought to be sitting there like, what? Hello. I'm going to let her feed me. And I have watched her do some amazing things. So we're excited. I wanted to give that part. And she has her also her product table. She has some amazing T-shirts and products. She has her books. And so those of you who are, are here and you do not have the privilege of saying, I have purchased her books, you can purchase her books today. Uh, they're on the table. They are $20. Her books are $20, as well as her T-shirts are on sale today for $10. Some amazing, some amazing products that will inspire you. And, and you need to tap in every Monday morning and Friday morning morning she basically now she's running and operating coach Catherine empowers where she's not only a life coach but she's a Christian counselor she is again a mental health specialist glory to God ask me how I know because she kept me hallelujah focused when I was losing mine I was living with the therapist, and then the whole time while I'm, listen, while I'm off on the deep end, she's still counseling, ministering, doing work, mothering, loving, pastoring, covering, hallelujah. I'm telling you what I know. Y'all ain't got to say amen. I can say it for you, and I'm honored to say, Apostle Catherine, we love you. We appreciate you, and we're not basically, we're not overdoing anything. We're not even doing it enough, but I'm going to get out of the way because we have somebody who's also qualified to share some things with, with you in regards to Apostle Catherine, so let's see Pastor Linda. She's going to come and give words of inspiration and after which we will come back and we will bring the man of God up and he's going to preach and teach I believe a word that's going to bless us. Let's receive the woman of God as she comes in Jesus name. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. I thank you. Uh, let's, man, let's put our hands together for Apostle Edwin. Amen. Let's, you can do better than that, y'all. He's a man of God. Amen. Our leader. And to our honoree, God bless you, Apostle Catherine. And to our man of God who for the hour, Apostle Carlisle, God bless you. It is a privilege and an honor. Apostle asked me to do a word of encouragement. And I said, God, you know, I can get up here and say so much about this woman of God. How she had been an inspiration in even my life and my family life. But God shifted me. He said, he shifted me. He said, because I've been in this ministry over 20 some years. And God shifted me. He said, no, I, this is what I want you to say to her today. So as I began to seek God what to say, he brought Mary into my spirit. You know, Martha and Mary, two sisters. He said, tell her that she has been his Mary. That even all the things you have been through, Apostle Catherine, you choose the best part. You choose to worship. Anybody know Apostle Catherine? She's a worshiper. I'm not talking about just a song. She worshiped. Even through all the times you got up and you had prayed for your family, interceded on behalf of your family, on behalf of the church. God said, I saw you. I heard you. So as I begin to worship, um, begin to um, seek God, he said, you know what? Tell her that I know her name. He said he know your name. 
I said, God, you know you, God, you don't know everybody's name. He said, no, I know my worshiper's name. Those that worship, he said, because I'm looking for those who worship me in spirit and in truth. Pastor Kevin, he said, he know your name. So as I began to see God, he took me to Exodus 33. That's two verses of scripture. I'm going to get out your way. I know we got a man's coming. I'm going to read it in the King James. I'm going to read it in the NIV. King James Version said, and the Lord said unto Moses, but I'm going to say, and the Lord said unto Catherine, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken your prayer request. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Verse 19 said, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will whom I will be gracious, I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And I said, and the Lord said to Catherine, I will do the very thing you have asked because I'm pleased with you and I know your name. Verse 19 said, and the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness, all my goodness to pass in front of you, not behind, but in front of you. I will proclaim my name. The Lord in his prayer, in your presence. So as I began to seek God, he woke me up to say, look. He said, search out the word goodness in the Hebrew. And I did that. One word he told me to look at was wealth. So verse 19 said, when he said, I sent all my goodness, he said, I'm sending all my wealth in front of you. Because where God is taking you, oh God, where God is taking you, Apostle Catherine, Wealth have to perceive your, your purpose. Wealth have to perceive your destiny. So God said today, Pastor Catherine, he got, oh my God, he has Catherine Newsom ministry. That's one of your prayer requests. God said, he has that. He said, I got you. Oh God, if you go back and read um, Exodus 13, uh, Father up in that scripture, Moses said, God, you told me to do this thing. You told me to lead these people. You didn't tell me who you're going to send with me. God said he prepared no staff for you even now. Uh-huh. He's going to send your help, Apostle Catherine. God said even today, he's going to send your administrator assistants that's going to know your heart, that's going to strategize with you. This is what I see in the spirit. God said, I'm sending a wind. A mighty wind. And it's going to ship Catherine and Powell's. Uh-huh. It's going to shift. God said he got you. He heard your prayers. He heard your concern. Don't care. Don't even don't, don't worry about what he looks like now. God said I got even. I even got the Father's Conference. <laughs> uh-huh. Don't worry about the registration. God said I got it. It's coming. People are going to begin to register. But God told me to tell you he know your name. He know your name. And the fresh wind that's coming is going to blow. It's going to shift. It's going to shift. He said, I'm going to tell you who to pick. I'm going to tell you who to choose to go to sin with you. He said, I'm going to tell you. Don't worry about who this, that. God said, I'm going to tell you who's going to go with you. And I'm going to leave with this scripture right here that says in 1 Corinthians 9, 2 and 9. And I'm going to speak of this over Catherine and Powell and Newsom. And it says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered to the heart of man. All the good things God has prepared for those who love him, for his worshipers. God said, you are a worshiper. You have a pure heart. And God said, he heard you. No matter what it looks like, God said, I got you. And not only have he, he got you, but impact, we got it too, don't we? Come on, stand on your feet. Come on, stand on your feet. Tell somebody, my wealth is going to perceive my destiny and my purpose. If you receive that, come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My wealth is <laughs> going to perceive. Pastor Kevin is getting ready to line up. Your wealth is getting ready to line up with your purpose and with your destiny. God bless you. I love you. Just the way you are. I love you. God bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Give God praise. Thank God for Elder Linda. 
Thank God for Elder Linda Jones. What a word. Y'all ought to just take a moment and let's just help Apostle Catherine receive this word. Come on. Whenever your leader is being blessed by something, it's imperative that we not move on as if it doesn't matter. But let's just let's just take a moment and allow her to soak in this. Come on, that's it. Come on, encourage her in the Lord, Father. We thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, just worship him right where you are. Come on, just worship him right where you are. We get ready to bring the man of God. But let's just worship God and just worship God with her as she receives powerful word from the Lord. Powerful word from the Lord. Powerful word from the Lord. Ah, man, so thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I feel a fresh wind blowing in this place. Such a fresh wind of God. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Listen, again, we thank you for indulging us and giving us the liberty to just take a moment to just encourage this woman of God. I'm telling you, the word of the Lord came to us and said, as we bless, honor, and as we refresh her with words of encouragement and as we take the time to honor her, God is going to basically bless you and bless us because you can't honor whom he has anointed and who he honors. When you honor Abraham, if you bless Abraham, he will bless you. He said, if you curse Abraham, I'm going to curse you. Come on, somebody. And this is our Abrahamic blessing, amen, in our Apostle Catherine. And so we thank God and I hope and pray that that word just bless you. What a wonderful wonderful word. Thank you again, Elder Jones. Some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful words of encouragement. Listen, I am going to get out of the way because I believe purpose and destiny has brought this man of God here today. And I'm telling you, when we were basically praying about this and the spirit of the Lord spoke, uh, he, he dropped in my spirit and the Holy Spirit just sort of, uh, like bring him in to close it out and a pa pastor call out who is always just so supportive so uh, faithful even in his support of impact here as well as apostle Catherine and myself he is no stranger to us nor to this particular city he's a native of goldsboro but i'm thankful because i knew when god put him in my spirit that we were going to get something that we needed and so i am so honored to be able to bring this man of god uh, before you today he again is no stranger to us he is no stranger to this city. He has some of his family here today. Thank God for you being here. Amen. With us on this Memorial Day weekend even. Come on. We thank God for uh, those of you who have pressed in. And I'm excited. But I'm thankful to be able to introduce to some and present to others. None other than. And, and I hear this, Pastor Carl. And we, we'll talk about this later. Because there's a shift that's coming for you as well. Because you've been doing apostolic work for years. Everything about your ministry has been apostolic. And God says, I'm getting ready to bring you into your, the, the weight of even your calling. You're getting ready to come into it. And the Lord is going to even, uh, I'm telling you, I, I felt it in my spirit even on yesterday as I was praying for you and praying for the service. But there's an apostolic grace that you've walked in and you've never coveted or desired anything as it relates to a title. But God says, it's time to shift. It's time to shift. My calling and grace is to identify apostles and lay hands on them and to release and activate them into their particular grace and that's what's on your life and so all weekend it's like it's been like man and I thought Elder Jones said it but I'm gonna introduce Apostle Alvin call out and I say it to the world because truly he is an apostle of the Lord he's been doing apostolic work come on here if you know anything about apostolic he founded ministries he I mean he is a pioneer and so we welcome you to Impact Church Goldsboro. And as we receive you today, we receive the Lord as it is in truth. We're getting ready to hear from God. The Bible says that we receive the people that God sent and we receive them. And as we receive him, we are actually receiving God even as he comes. So we introduce to some, present to others, none other than Apostle Alvin Carlisle. And we're going to receive the word of the Lord as he comes in his own way. Come on, clap your hands, Impact. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, receive the man of God. Come on, somebody give the Lord another big praise in the house. Come on, let's bless him for another moment. Come on, because he's wonderfully awesome. My, 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 my. Amen, I'm telling y'all the truth. I've been fed this morning already. I, I, Pastor Robert, I just wanted to come up and be like, let the words of my mouth. 
I tell y'all the truth. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to preach. Let your prosperity proceed. Your destiny and your purpose. That's what I'm... Huh? I got ready to rob, steal, hustle. Amen. All of that. Amen. God was speaking. Amen. What a blessing. Let's thank God again, y'all. We can't do it enough. Let's thank God again for this great woman of God. Amen. I was, I am so honored. Apostle C, I'm honored to be here. Amen. And to share on, on this great celebration. I tell you the truth. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that, that in this season that we are still cognizant and aware of the value of honoring what God has put before us. Are y'all with me here? I'm talking, about in, I'm talking about in a season where so many people have hustled, scammed, pimped the people of God, that folk are afraid to extend themselves. Are y'all with me here? You know, they, they're afraid to give uh, those who serve what they're due because the body has been so abused. But I thank God for people who know how to rise above the fray. Come on, somebody. Don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Huh? Don't look, don't make nobody everybody, right? Right? Because everybody ain't on the same stuff. Come on here, somebody. But they are those who are worthy of double honor, right? Who have labored in the word and in ministry, have imparted, have sacrificed. Are y'all with me here? Now, so, so I'm glad we still in position to say thank you, ma'am. God bless you. We give you honor. We celebrate you. We appreciate you. Listen, and it don't take nothing away from God. God. God knows who he is. Are y'all with me here? Folk work my nerve with them disclaimers, you know. Well, the Lord did it. Well, we know the Lord did it. Anybody with good sense know. Are y'all with me here? Huh? Huh, folk? That's kind of like that was a good word. Wait, you know the Lord. Well, yeah, of course I know the Lord, you know. Huh, folk? You can't even say thank you, you know. Lord, thank you. I appreciate that, you know. We have to, I get the glory. Well, yeah, certainly. I know that. Are y'all with me here? Huh? So blessing her, honoring her takes none of his glory. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. All that we are is, 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 is in him and through him, for him, by him. Are y'all with me here? We can't celebrate his daughter and not... Come on here, somebody. Huh? My boy walked across the stage a couple of weekends. I had like I was getting that diploma. I was like, yes, sir. Huh? I, I was out front. Y'all, y'all with me here? Because you can't celebrate him. And not celebrate me. You can't celebrate, amen, his daughter. Not, and not celebrate him. We're celebrating everything that God has done, is doing, huh? And because destiny and purpose is on the way, what God's about to do. Come on, y'all, give the Lord a hand praise. Woo. I'm running my mouth a little bit because I don't have but a handful of messages. We're going to get out of here today, amen. Y'all been celebrating all week so much good word, amen, today. And I'm just, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm just grateful to be here. Amen. Pastor Stephanie sends her love. Amen. She, she's holding down. She's holding down the fort at Impact Winston-Salem this morning. Amen. And so I, I, I do indeed miss her. Amen. Being here, that, that doesn't mean I wasn't wined and dined last night, though. Amen. I, I still got wined and dined by a beautiful woman last night, though. Yeah. Thank God for my cousin Selena. Come on here, somebody. Huh? Huh? We don't play. <laughs> hey man, I thank God for my cousin Selena. She wanted to dine me last night. Had me down on the waterfront. I said, yes, son, Jesus. Come on here. Amen. Hey Amen. Hey so I'm refreshed. I thank God for it. Let's go to the word today. Y'all have full of moment. moments today. Hey Amen. As we talk, it is always good. Thank God for all of you for family sliding through. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. Some, some blood family, some adopted family. It's always good to see you. Thank God for Apostle Vaughn Newsom. Amen. Amen. He, is a, he, he, he is indeed a, a, a true, true, true father in the kingdom. Amen. I thank God for the great apostolic anointing that rests upon his life. Malachi. Amen. The final book of the final book of the Old Testament. I only have a handful of moments. Thank you for these brothers that's been serving. Amen. Since I got here. I told him, I said, listen, I'm a country boy. Y'all ain't got to do all that. Amen. <laughs> Huh? I still, huh? Come on, pa Pastor Rob. I'm, I'm six two, two and some change. I ain't gonna say how much, hey, Amen. So I, I, I can carry this. I'm all right. Oh, y'all with me here? But I appreciate y'all service. It shows good training. Amen. Amen. So I tell him, I said, no. 
I'm good. I don't, I don't need nothing special, amen. I still like lima beans and neck bones and all that. I'm going to be fancy one day, but right now, I'm just, <laughs> Malachi 4, Father, thank you for this moment, this time you've given us. Thank you for giving us opportunity to celebrate your servant. Oh, God, to honor her for what you have done in and through and for her. We thank you, Father, that her best day, her next days are her best days for the great things that yet lay before her. Thank you for giving us a privilege to go along for the ride, to be able to see all that you have done and are doing. Thank you for equipping us to stand with her, oh God, and to support her and to undergird God, what you are doing in and through her life. Thank you for the wisdom, the insight, the foresight to be able to come and to celebrate your servant. Oh God, and we don't, we don't take away any of your glory, but we glorify and honor you for what you are doing, oh God, in and through her life. And so we come now to this moment, this time of of the declaration, the impartation of your word. Man can't live by bread alone. We have to know what you're saying. And so today we open our hearts and minds to receive what the spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. Lord, allow us to articulate with clarity, with concision, with precision, oh God, what the spirit has to say in this place today. God, equip us afresh, anoint us afresh to say what you have to say. Thank you for hearts minds, ears that have been prepared as receptacles of your word. Thank you that today that the word shall fall upon good ground. Oh God, it shall germinate in the hearts of your people. Oh God, it shall, it shall produce and reproduce fruit and that fruit shall remain. Thank you Lord for blessing us. Thank you for using this vessel. Our prayer in Jesus name. Somebody shout amen. 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 For a handful of moments, the, the, the final book of the Old Testament, so if you're having a hard time, I want to talk to you after service. Amen. But the final book of the Old Testament, Malachi, amen, the fourth chapter. I want to begin reading at the fourth verse. And it says, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold. I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of, the, of that great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to their children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Again, that sixth verse says, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Today for a handful of months, I just want to teach from a theme or a subject today, the return of the fathers and the sons. Are y'all here with me today? Today I want to talk to you about the return of the fathers and the sons. Brothers and sisters, understand anybody that pays attention on any level understand that we live in a very dark day. We live, uh, the, our nation is covered by a veil of darkness. Are y'all with me here? We've never seen a time, a season in history like we're seeing today. Think about gross darkness. It only brings definition to the light. I would suggest to you today that, that there was a level of gross darkness that is on our nation and, and even around the world. And so much of it can, can be attributed to the breakdown of the connections of the generations. Are y'all with me here? I'm talking about in the natural. Some of the stuff, the level of violence that we see can be traced back to the breakdown of the connection between the generations. Understand, it's a scary thing. I, 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 know, I know there's a generation now, millennials say we do it different, we are different, but my problem is, and what I'm afraid of, is they, they've thrown out the baby. Come on here with the bathwater. Some, some of y'all might have saw the popular YouTube video sometime back 
preachers here uh, up there preaching. Pastor Kathy, he said, you know, us millennial folk, like my age and younger than me, we just different. We, we ain't going to do this and that. We ain't working on no job 40 years. People ain't talking to us like this and that. And we're going to do this and that and the other. And folk was sharing it all around. I said, I get it. Amen. The millennials, you are different. And y'all have, do have a different ideology and a mindset. But the problem is there's some stuff that was left for you in the previous generation that you should have brought along with you. Are y'all with me here? If we tell the truth about God and who God is, he says, I'm the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. And if you lose the connection, then you might lose God. Are y'all with me here? But I'm convinced that there is a level and a flow that you have to grab, hold, glean from, hold on to in order that you can take what you need for the next level. Amen. Because as wonderful as you are, there's some stuff you have not seen. Amen. As smart as you are, there's some stuff you have not heard. Amen. There are some things that you're going to face that you hadn't seen before. Amen. And regardless of all of your intellect and ability, amen, you have to have the wherewithal that you grab from somebody before you. You still got to have, I remember mama said. My daddy taught me this. You, are you with me here? But I'm here to tell you that if we had such breakdown in the natural between the generations that have caused such a darkness upon our land, if that's the truth in the natural, then how much more? Come on here, somebody. If it has called a decline in the natural, Pastor Gather, how much more is it serious when we have a breakdown in the spiritual generations? Are y'all with me here? If I really had time to hang out and I don't have long to hang out, this is a short teaching, amen. But if I had to hang out, amen, I, time to hang out, I would talk about a lot of these monsters we have that are loose and running around the body now. They have, they have no traceable line, amen. They have no history. They have no background. They have no undergirding. We don't know where they came from. It just seemed like they popped out of nowhere, laid hands on themselves, certified their own anointing, released themselves into the kingdom, hold, 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 hang out, amen, with their contemporaries. Temporaries, amen, who sign and co-sign on every bit of foolishness that they want to do, amen, and then expect for us to receive them, amen, listen, they, they, listen, they, got, they got presentation, they got platform, amen, but they don't know nothing about oil. Are y'all with me here? They don't know nothing about anointing because what I found out about the anointing, Pastor Catherine, is that it falls on the head, amen, it runs to the beard, amen, all the way to the skirts of the garment, and if you ain't under nothing, you can't catch nothing, amen, and don't tell me that God circumvented, amen, everybody else to come dig you out of nowhere to anoint you for a moment and you ain't covered by nothing. But I read the word when it said the seven sons of Sceva would try to cast out the devil. And the devil said, listen, Paul, Jesus, I know. He said, Paul, I know. But who is y'all? I don't know y'all. I don't see your succession. I don't see what you're under. I don't see what you're connected to. So don't tell me you anointed and you ain't connected. Ooh, I got to get out of here. Are y'all with me here? And I'm afraid of the body of Christ now because we have too many people apostles that's leading but ain't connected. We can't trace where you came from. Them demons said, I look down your line and I don't see you connected to nothing. Amen. But I believe when you connect it right. Amen. You can walk around in the spirit. Amen. You can stomp like the big dogs. Amen. Devil see you and back up. Amen. We say, oh, I can see you. You look like you've been hanging out with that tribe called. Y'all ain't said nothing to me. Amen. Look like you've been hanging out with that tribe called Impact. I see something on you. Amen. I don't see. I think I'm going to back up today. Amen. I don't got the wrong one. Amen. When you got a line. Amen. And a history. A legacy. A lineage behind you. Amen. You can come walk in the room and say because of what I'm connected to. Amen. Because of who my spiritual parents are. Amen. I know they've already interceded and covered for me. Amen. In the spirit. So I'm going to bring everything that they release with me. Amen. As I move forward into my next place. As I confront my demons and devils. As I kick down doors. Amen. And walk through places. Amen. That I've never been before. I got weight behind me because I'm... Ooh, I wish I had two or three connected folk. Amen. Would throw up their hands and say I'm connected. Hey, a lot of people have lost it because they, they felt like they were big and bad enough by themselves. I don't need nobody. I got, I got my leather bound virgin of the King James Bible. I done been to him and every seminary, cemetery. Amen. I done been here, there, and everywhere. Hey, but listen, let me tell you something. Ain't no all that. Listen, I appreciate theological uh, prowess. I appreciate being educated and understanding your way around the word of God. But listen, let me tell you something. Yokes are only destroyed. Burdens are only removed by the purveyance of the anointing. Amen. If you listen, if you got Bible history, if you got homiletics and homiletics, if you got, listen, if you got all of that good stuff, amen, but you ain't connected to a flow of the all. You might be educated, but you ain't empowered. 
Are y'all with me here? Huh, don't quote me, don't quote me Hebrew and Greek and you ain't got no tongue. Huh, I need somebody with some Holy Ghost. I promise you. Hey Amen. When my world is falling to pieces and I need somebody to rescue me from where I am, I promise you, your, your, your book knowledge ain't going to help me out. I need somebody that is dripping with the oil of the Spirit. I need somebody who has spent time in the presence of God. I need somebody that has a weight on them. Hey, listen, Pastor Robert, they even said about the early apostles that they certified their anointing because they knew they were uneducated men. Ain't no way you got the wisdom, the insight, the foresight, the knowledge, the direction, able to do all that you do and God not be with you because everybody who functions like you function, don't win it, got it from somewhere. He said, listen, we circumvented man and win it, got it from heaven. Woo! Somebody, look, look at your neighbor and tell, I got it from heaven. Yeah, I know, I know you be wondering how I shine. I know you how you wonder why I do what I do. Listen, I got it straight from heaven. I got to get out of here. I love Malachi because Malachi is closing out the Old Testament, the old contract, the old covenant. And Pastor Robert, when he's closing out the old covenant, he begins to write about the latter days. He was, he was taking this moment to prophetically speak about a time that will come. Understand, church, if we are not cognizant about the moment and the hour we are in, we're going to miss it. This present darkness is not by happenstance. But I'm here to tell you that there was an alignment and a realignment in the universe and in the atmosphere. And God is positioning and repositioning us, amen, for this final push. God Almighty, somebody shout, count me in. Listen, he's positioning and repositioning us for this final push. Malachi writing on the behalf of God is telling the children of God that you must prepare yourself for the final hour. So when he writes to them in verse 4, the first thing he says is, remember the commandments and the statutes. God Almighty. He said, remember the word of God. Amen. The problem that I'm afraid of so many folk in the church today, they don't have any word. Huh? They got popular culture, huh? They still, pre- they still preaching about uh, Chris Rock and Will Smith. And, and, and huh? are y'all with me here? As, as horrific as what happened down in Texas this week, amen, God didn't give me that to preach today. Don't say that the church doesn't need a voice amen, to talk about what led to what happened, but at the end of the day, popular culture can't be your platform. Man can't live by bread alone, but we got to return back to the word of God. I, I appreciate you being hip. I appreciate you being lit. I appreciate you being relevant to the culture. I appreciate you got your little skinny clothes on. Amen. I appreciate all that stuff you do. Amen. But at the end of the day, amen, why you relevant to the culture, why they can connect with you and feel you, and why you talking about stuff that they on YouTube about, TikTok about, Facebook about, amen, why you doing all that stuff? I want to know, are you still rooted and grounded in the word? Are you attaching, amen, what you say to the word? or is the word the foundation of what you say and do? I need y'all to hear me. When Malachi wrote about the final days, the first thing he instructed him, he said, remember the word. Huh? I'm afraid of these little monsters that lead the kingdom now because they don't have any word. They got cliches, popular sayings. Are y'all with me here? Huh? They got platform and presentation, but no power. Good God Almighty. Are y'all with me here? They got platform. They fly, you're going to be cute. Now, they're going to be up there in that little skinny clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Are y'all with me here? They're going to be fancy. I mean, the photo shoot going to be on, going to be lit. They're going to do all of that. Amen. But then when you get there, amen, you're going to leave with the same stuff you walked in with. Amen. Because you can have a microphone, a platform. You can have a presentation. You can look good. But when we get there, what are we leaving with? Huh? You see something different when you peek behind that flyer. You say, oh yeah, I saw you real fancy on that flyer. Amen. But when I come with my hang up, my dysfunction, when I'm wrestling with my devils, amen, can I walk in your front door and leave delivered? Somebody said, give me the word. You got to have the word of God. It's, it's the only thing that transforms. But he says to us, and I'm moving quickly, I'm almost done. He says to them in verse 4, he said, you got you to gotta, you gotta remember the word. You got to remember, you got to, you got to continue to lift up the statutes of God. Where are the scripture quoting folk? Are y'all with me here? Huh? Folk don't even pray scripture no more. I listen, I listen to half these little monsters pray. Hey Amen. they don't even, they don't even, they ain't even praying back to God, Selena, his word. Hey Amen. how can I perfect, uh, expect him to perform and you, I'm not even praying back his word? Your cute cliche ain't going to get me over. I need to know what thus says. Are y'all with me here? So he says to them, firstly, remember the Lord. But then he says, and he said, but before that great and dreadful day comes, he says, I'm going to send Elijah. <laughs> Ooh, 
car felt like running. Are y'all with me here? He said, I'm going to send Elijah. He said, because when you come to the place of the culmination of time and when the finest hour of the church comes and before Jesus returns to, to take us back and to bring judgment upon the earth, he said, before all of that happens, he says, I'm going to send Elijah. He said, because there was a breakdown. How many folks know there's a breakdown in the body? Huh? This, this darkness that we've just went through, this season of pandemic, let me tell you something. More happened, more happened than coronavirus. Huh? Huh? I'm here to tell you that there was a wind that blew through the body of Christ. Amen. While we were in pandemic. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of stuff shut loose. Can I, can I speak to this house? Don't worry about nothing that shook loose, amen, during the time of testing and trial because that's what contrary times come to do. That's what contrary winds come to do is to blow through, amen, what's not tightly connected. Amen, if you, don't, if you can't perceive and understand past your natural eye and what you see and your feelings and emotions, you can't stick. But when you got Holy Ghost, you say, even when I don't understand, when I can't even figure it out, I'm going to stick and stay what I'm assigned to, amen, because, listen, I don't move on me I move on him and if he ain't said shift I ain't going don't, don't, don't worry about what should lose amen sometimes God would allow contrary winds seasons of testing to come so he can shake some stuff loose stop crying stop murmuring stop, cry, stop calling stop texting and emailing amen God bless you we keep it Huh? I got some ministry to do. I got some assignment to finish. We got some places to go. We are a tribe called Impact. Amen. And I have not seen and ear have not heard and it have not entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for us. But I thank God he's revealing in us. He's revealing to our spirit that he's still flowing. So he says to us, and I'm moving quickly. He said, and before that day, he said, I'm going to send Elijah. Amen, bro. Go. We gotta understand that that, that brother, but that brother Elijah, uh, brother Elijah, Aunt Sarah was the great reformer. He was the great reformer. He was the one that stood, amen, between folk that was stuck. Come on here, somebody. They didn't know if they want to be church folk. Are y'all with me here? Sometimes I be wondering now. I be like, I don't, I don't know what team you on. Huh? Huh? That's right, he found something they weren't sure they wanted to be church folk. They wanted to be the world folk. They were stuck. Huh? And what I love about Elijah, he didn't care about being popular. Come on here, somebody. He didn't care about being accepted and embraced by men. He had an anointing on him to ruffle feathers. Call folk out. Come on here, somebody. You got to have a kind of all on you that folk know you ain't come to play when you come. Are y'all with me here? Matter of fact, folks shouldn't be comfortable. Listen, you should accept and embrace everybody. Amen. But folks shouldn't be comfortable with their stuff around you. I appreciate you receiving me, but I know you ain't going to receive this I'm up to right now. Huh? But when folks can turn up and still do their stuff with you, you better wonder if you have the spirit of the reformer on you. Huh? I'm almost there. Y'all give me about a handful of minutes. So I'm going to be, I'm done. The Bible says that before that great day comes, he's going to send Elijah. The spirit of Elijah, the great reformer. Y'all remember, he showed up on the mountain. Huh? Called the people on Sarah. They had all went left. They were all went left. They were acting crazy. They were acting like they didn't know God. They had tore down the altars of God. They had abandoned the word of God. They had slain the priest of God. They had slain all of the prophets of God. And they had, they had ran amok. They said there was no use, no value of the preacher no more. I ain't going to church. I don't need no preacher. I'm just going to do what I want to do and how I want to do it. I'm, I'm going to create my own paradigm for worship. Ooh, I wish I had time. Are y'all with me here? But it was Elijah, the great reformer, who stood up on Mount Carmel. He said, how long y'all going to be stuck? How long y'all going to keep playing church? Amen. How long y'all going to keep standing between uh, uh, halfway in the church and halfway in the world? How long y'all going to keep on playing around? Listen, I'm looking for the, people, the preacher that can go back. I'm talking about that black robe, amen, Bible thumping, amen, to tell folk the difference between their right and wrong. Listen, I receive you, but I don't receive the mess. And I want you to understand as much as I'm going to love you, you don't have to hide from your stuff. I want you to be real when you come. But at the end of the day, don't expect me to pacify.
I don't have to condemn. Are y'all with me here? But there is something in me that's going to resist what's in you. And if you don't feel a resistance between what's in me and what's in you, amen, I ain't worried about something being wrong with you. Something is definitely wrong. Are y'all with me here? Elijah was a great reformer, so he stood on the mountain. Pastor Robert, he was willing to say, listen, y'all stuck. Huh? And today we live in a season where people are stuck. I don't know if they want to do church at all or not. I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to worship God. I don't. I don't know. We have lost almost pa Pastor Catholic, Apostle Catholic, a whole generation of young believers. Cause they don't even know if they want to do the church thing. That's what they call it, the church thing, huh? Because I say, you, you know, I'm spiritual, huh? You know, my homegirl, you know, she Muslim. You know, you know, and you know, I'm a spiritualist. You know, I I believe in the higher power. Huh? Huh? We smoke a little stuff and we talk to him. Huh? To them, there was no line of demarcation. And they don't understand the value, huh, of the house of God. They don't understand the value of the word of God. So they still stuck. They don't know where they want to be. We about lost a whole generation of young believers. Statistics will tell you young young folk have left the church because what they what they have not have done is they have not seen the value in being connected. I'm getting there quick. But what happens is, is that we need a revival of the spirit of Elijah who was down upon Mount Carmel. He said, Y'all stuck, but I'm about to unstick you. <laughs> Huh? Y'all halt between two opinions, but God sent me at the right time. I'm here to tell you that there is a revival and emergence. God, thank you, Holy Ghost. There is a resurgence of the bodies of believers that's going to begin to stand and proclaim, amen, this gospel. And I'm here to tell you that it, it is going to have, amen, a taste that cannot be resisted. It's going it's, it's to, listen, the people are going to be urgent, amen, apostle. Listen, God is sending, I believe, a great revival, amen, upon the body of Christ, amen. Man, and if it's going to be in the body of Christ, then certainly this house is a line. It has to be on this house. And if it's on this house, then I believe it got to be on that house. Amen. And I believe, I believe it has to flow. Are y'all with me here? I believe it. So, uh, so the spirit of Elijah is falling back on the church. And when you see Elijah on the top of, top of Mount Carmel, because they were stuck, they said, we don't really see the difference in God and Baal. God got prophets. Baal got prophets. Huh? They, they jump and shout over there. Guess what we do over here? Ooh, y'all ain't talking to me. The reason that they can't make a decision is because they don't see the difference. Are y'all with me here? Huh? I don't see why, why. You know, God know me. I know God, you know. Right? Why I need to go listen to that, huh? That mouth breather. That's what they say, huh? 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 Spitting and hollering at us. Uh, old country Carlisle running his mouth, huh? Why? Why I need to go do that? Huh? I got my spirituality. I talk, I read, you know, I read books of enlightenment and spirituality. Huh? So finally, Elijah had to move them to a place. I want y'all to hear this and I'm almost done. Elijah had to move them to a place and say, okay, well, you need to see the difference. Huh? I believe this is an hour that God is going to show the difference. He said, if we're going to reform in this hour, there has to be a difference. Huh? He said, well, y'all go ahead and set your stuff up. Set your worship up. Set up what you do. Let me see what this produces for you. If you want that, go to that. I'm going to show you what we bring. He took Brother Robert and rebuilt the altar of God. He went and reestablished the house of God. He went and opened up the door back for worship. He put the praise team back up. He put, he put, put the people of God back in order. Woo, I wish I had time. Amen. He began to align and to realign, amen, out of his apostolic authority. Amen. Begin to dig deep, apostle, and to create foundations to build something new on. He took himself, amen, the stones of the altar and began to set them back in place because he was anointed as a reformer. And he said, and I'm going to tell you what, because you feel like my altar, amen, man looks like that altar amen let me show you the difference amen wet my altar down God Almighty. I wish somebody came to have church he said wet my altar down your altar dry let my altar be wet pour water all over my altar matter of fact dig a trench amen around my altar amen and saturate it with water I'm going to show you the difference why you need to leave that and come and get some of this amen he said wet my altar down he said I tell you what the God that answers by fire God Almighty. 
Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. He said, let the God who answers by fire, amen, let him be God. Pastor C, I believe that this is the time that God is returning fire, amen, back to the house of God. I believe that there was a divine manifestation, amen, coming from heaven. The Bible said in Acts 2 that they were all in one place. They were all with one accord, amen, and there came a sound, amen, of a mighty rushing wind, cloven tongues of fire, amen, lighting on each and every one of them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. God Almighty, I believe that there is a return of power and authentic anointing that's returning on the body. Are y'all with this word helping me? Are y'all with me here? He said, listen, he said, let the, let the fire come and let it be the witness. I'm closing. He said, let the fire come and let the fire be the witness. The spirit of Elijah said, let the fire come. And let it be the difference. I believe that there was a returning. We was just talking about it. Are y'all with me here? Y'all listen up. They don't see a difference, Pastor Robert. But when the church was birthed, when Jesus and the apostles walked the earth, the reason that everybody flocked to what they were offering because they passed through the marketplace and the shadows. Are y'all with me here? Huh, Pastor Wendy? They, they pull handkerchiefs off their body. Take that home to Grandma. She's going to be all right. Huh? Huh? They were running hospitals out of business. Huh? Lame folk. Amen. Lame folk who were sick. They experienced the true authentic. I'm here to tell you, listen, 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 Mother Newsom. This is what God told me. He said, I was riding my car, minding my own business. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, Pastor, I want you to understand that the church is now moving from a place that we've been focused on the superficial I'm moving us back to the supernatural. I said, God, I thank you. Amen. I'm, I, I wish I had two or three people, amen, that really wanted the fire to come back. Signs, wonders, and miracles to come back. That lame folk can start walking again. Hey, listen, if you can't accept it and you can't receive it, amen, it can't manifest. I wish I had two or three people that was excited about the return of authentic fire. Amen. People being healed. People being delivered. Amen. I appreciate, amen, the vaccine. Amen. But I'm looking for an anointing. Amen. I'm looking for folk to pull out their bottles of oil again and say, where the sick at? Where the lame at? Where the maim at? Where the crippled at? Where the dysfunctional at? Where the demon possessed at? Amen. Where are those, amen, who have problems and issues? Where are those who need real fire? <laughs> are y'all with me here? He said, we need fire back on the church. I believe the difference in this hour is that God will return an authentic fire back. Huh? And apostle, I'm not even talking about just prophetic words and deliverance. You know when folk want to hustle you, you know what they'll give you? A prophetic word and fake deliverance. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me, huh? 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 Brothers, when, when, when Jesus had a crew that was on his left hand, and he said, hey, what's up with y'all? He said, Jesus, you know us. Huh? We prophesy in your name. We cast out devils in your name. Jesus, I don't even know y'all. Y'all ain't talking to me. Huh? Just because they prophesy don't mean they got a prophetic word. Huh? I seen, I seen devils create a whole deliverance service. Are y'all with me here? One devil act like he casting out the other devil, and the other devil act like he gone. And then the other devil that was on the floor, he get up, and then he walk out the door, amen, and he go right back to the same old stuff, and then all the church folk, amen, give the other devil all their money, amen, and then they come back the next week on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday night, amen, and do the same thing. Are y'all with me here? But when real power show up, Huh? Ain't talking about this clownery. Huh? I saw y'all favorite little prophet. He laid hands on a woman. Hey man, the woman came for real delivery. He said, if you come up here, why you gonna lock your knees? Huh? Went off on the woman. You locking your knees? Well, if you ain't come to receive what you're locking your knees for. I said, Negro, if you had power, hey man, her knees being locked, hey man, wouldn't mean a healer be. Because I, I'm a witness that when the power of God hits you, hey man, you can say you ain't going down, hey man, but you'll go down if it's real power. Hey man, she wasn't faking. You get fuck on the street, they don't know that. Oh, I'm supposed to fall right now. Oh, nobody didn't tell me that. Sister was standing there like, what? 
Huh? That's this generation. They stand here like, what you pushing me for? You, got, you ain't got no power. Keep it moving. Don't go off on the woman, Apostle. See, what you like your legs for? What me like my legs got to do with me receiving from God? But man of God, if you had real power. Huh? Elijah said, I'm going to call down fire. I got to close. He said, I'm going to send. He said, I'm going to send the spirit of Elijah, the great reformer. And then he said, and not only that, I'm going to return the hearts of the fathers. I'm convinced that this is a real time of reemergence of authentic. Are y'all with me here? See, Apostle, I'm going to tell you something. When, we, when you anoint it with that mantle, you always going to suffer adverse pressure from places of power. Never something weak. It always had to be something significant. The only thing that really sends true apostolic power was running to Beersheba, hiding on the juniper trees, is when real Jezebels got about. Don't ever be surprised about the storms that come on in your life because when you really have a true apostolic anointing on your life, you will receive adverse pressure from places of power. And a lot of time, I wish I had time, amen, it sent, it sent Elijah running out into the wilderness, sitting under a juniper tree, trying to get his head together because what adverse pressure and adverse seasons are meant to do is to separate that power from its assignment. It's meant to separate you, amen, from what God has called you to do, amen. And he went and had to get himself together under the juniper tree. Are y'all with me here? You always have to have a grace to allow folk to go through what they have to go through to get where they need. That's why I love David's mighty men. David went through stuff, uh, 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 Aunt Sarah, but his men never left. His son was dying. He was fasting and crying before the altar. Listen, but listen, but even though he was there and his men couldn't understand it, they still stood at the door. Ooh, don't play me out yet. I'm going to be there in about two minutes. Amen. But listen, his men still stood at the door. Amen. God is looking for folk even when you don't even understand what's going on. He said, listen, I don't know where to go, but I'm going to stand here at the door. Amen. Till everything goes. Are y'all with me here? He fasted and prayed for his son that was dying. When the son finally died, he got up. They said, now he get up and going to eat. We don't understand how he moving, but we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't said nothing to me. Huh? There's going to be seasons that you might not understand. But when you assign, his mighty man said, we ain't sure what's going on with that, but we're going to stand right here. Hey Amen. When he ready to move, we're going to move. When he ready to march, we're going to march. But you got to give folk who in leadership the grace, hey amen, to be where they need to be. Because adverse pressure from places of power are meant to separate apostolic authority from their place and their assignment. They're out in the wilderness when they need to be among their people. Hey amen. But sometimes you got to give them seasons to recover. Huh? Huh? Don't count me out because I'm down today. Give me a minute to recover. Huh? Give me a minute to get. So, because what I love about it is while he was there under a juniper tree, what he did before God came himself, he sent an angel. He said, you're going through, but I'm here to restore you. I'm here to build you back. He would try to listen. He, could, he came and cooked him a meal. Anybody there having a good meal make you feel better? Listen, that, that ribeye last night made me feel real good. Hey Amen. Listen, when, when, when you get a good meal, it'll help you feel better. And he said to him, he said, listen, let me make you this meal. And he said, go and lay down a little more. He let him rest a little while, and then the angel came back, cooked him another meal. He said, wake up. He said, because this journey is too great for you. Hey Amen. He said, you need to eat this meal. He said, this meal is going to give you the strength. Hey Amen. To run for 40 days. I wish I had time, but I got to get out of here. He said, let this meal, amen, because before I can restore your ministry, I got to restore you. Amen. And don't never throw away nobody, amen, that needs a moment of restoration. Amen. If you got enough Holy Ghost, you know you've been through enough seasons yourself. Amen. That you needed God to help you realign yourself, get yourself back in your place. It It doesn't diminish your anointing. It doesn't diminish your assignment. It doesn't diminish who you are in the kingdom of God. I just need a moment to shake myself. Are y'all with me here? The angel refreshed him. But what I love about it after that apostle, he sent him down to Horeb. <laughs> he sent him down to Mount Sinai. He sent him to the place where he's where the prophets hear God. Amen. Well, listen, he would send him down to the cave. Elijah there, Selena, inside of the cave. Amen. The Bible said an earthquake came. He said, that ain't God. He said, a fire came. He said, that ain't God. Are y'all with me here? Winds came. Started blowing. He said, that ain't God. But then all of a sudden, he heard a still, small voice. Hey, oh, my God from heaven. Amen. He said, there's my word. Amen. There's what I 
knee. He wrapped his head in his mantle. Amen. Because sometimes you got to shut out everything and everybody. You got to cover all your senses. But I need to talk to him and let him talk to me. And he walked out to the edge of the cave. Amen. He said, God, what do you have to say? What I love about it, he didn't talk about Jezebel. He didn't talk about the prophets of Baal. He didn't talk about nothing that was behind him. But Apostle Catherine, he began to say, you got sons you need to raise them. When the hearts of the fathers return to the son, all of a sudden there are sons that are waiting. He said, listen, I know I need you to go and anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. I need you to go anoint Jehu, the king over Israel. I need you to go find Elisha, the son of Shaphath. Amen. And anoint him to be prophet in your room. He's down there plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. He with the 12. He said, but when he feels your mantle, amen, he's going to shift. When he feels what's on you, he's going to move. Listen, don't worry about I got Jezebel. Bill, you go find the sons. Stop crying about what you've been through. Go find those that are waiting on you to be you. Go find those who need what's on you to be on them. Amen. Don't listen. This is an hour that the heart of the father is returning to the sons. The sons back to the father. We ain't looking for platform. We ain't looking for popularity. We ain't looking for masses or millions. We are looking for the power of God to rest fresh on us. Are y'all with me here? He ain't going to look for nothing else. I love the fact that he was crying, Apostle. God, I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with that. I'm dealing with God ignored all that. He said, okay, you know I'm venting. <laughs> huh? God didn't speak to none of what he was talking about. He said, okay, yeah, 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 okay, okay. So you done? Huh? God is not worried about what you've been through. He saw it before you got there. Huh? You still have destiny and purpose. Huh? He said, go find Haziel. And what I love about the whole prophecy, he said, he that escapes the sword of Haziel shall Jehu slay. And he that slay, uh, escaped the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Huh? Huh? When you're in trouble, all you need is your team. Huh? All you need is your team. He started talking to this apostolic father, Robert about refortifying his sons. Build up the sons. Encourage the sons. I'm here to tell you, we thank God for our apostolic leadership that we have in the tribe called Impact. Amen. Because it creates for us, amen, a line of impartation, amen, that we can receive, amen, a level of power, a level of strength that we can get the hands laid on us and the anointing can be passed. Somebody shout, I receive. Come on here, somebody. He went and anointed Hazael, who became a powerful man. Jehu, the king of Israel. Huh? And old Elijah. Come on. Someone who outran his father in miracles. Huh? I'm looking to raise up something that's more powerful than me. I'm looking for the teacher that can out-teach me. Huh? I'm, look, I'm looking for the preacher that can preach me to shame. Make me not even want to pick up my Bible or microphone and be like, that preacher. Are y'all with me here? He went and found those. God didn't talk about what he had been through the season. He even forgot about Mount Carmel. He said, I'm going on to next. Are y'all with me here? He walked past some closing. But he walked past Elijah, bro, Robert. So I'm out there playing with 12 yoke of oxen. He didn't even talk to him. He just took off his mantle. Huh? And I don't know if he extra. Me, me, I said, I'd have been extra. I'd have been like. I don't know if he were extra like that. I could be extra. I would, I would have been extra. They'd have been like, God would have been like, Pascal, you're doing too much. I, I just told you to lay the mantle on, right? I'm closing. He laid the mantle on Elijah. He didn't have to speak to him. Because when you catch the mantle, the mantle speaks for itself. Are y'all with me here? If you connect it, and I'm closing with this, we're getting ready to pray. If you connect it to this, and you can say why, you probably ain't called here. Well, I like this. I like that. I like, you might not be called here. Huh? Jesus said hard stuff like eat my, eat my body, drink my blood. Huh? Pastor, when the those that was around for the good ride, he said he tripped. Huh? But then he looked at his 12. 
Are y'all still here? Huh? All they had for goes is, where we gonna go? Where we gonna go? Hmm? If there are elements of the ministry that you connected to, this might not be your place. But if God connected your heart here, huh? Huh? You, you ever love somebody didn't know why you love them, just loved them? Huh? I tell Stephanie all the time, you know, ain't no why. I just love you. With everything I got, it ain't your cooking, you know, it ain't your beauty, it ain't your booty. I'm here to tell you, I just love you. Huh? Huh? And if you wasn't a gorgeous woman, I still love you. Huh? I, because my hearts are connected. This is where I've been assigned. When the hearts of the fathers return to the sons and the sons to the father, we become just like Elisha. When Elijah threw the mantle on him, he said, God, I found my daddy. Huh? He said, I found my leader. He said, let me go kiss my mom. My prophet said, what'd I do? He said, man, listen, let me go kiss my people so we can go. Huh? I said, man, what did I do to you? I ain't tell you to come and be a part of this. He said, you are my place. You are my assignment. You are what I'm connected to. And I'm here because God said it. Yeah. Are y'all with me here? Yeah. I thank God for powerful leadership. And if I can repeat, you got to be ditzy. If you don't glean from this. Huh? Come on here, somebody. Because I'm going back to Winston, I could say a whole bunch of other stuff. I don't want nobody to be upset. All right? I uh, can't talk to ugly people. They'll catch you at the back door, so. Uh, you had a lot of lip, didn't you, Pastor? Are uh, y'all with me? But you have to glean. This, this is an awesome anointing. Women of God, this is an awesome anointing. Huh? And you have to know in your spirit that it is your connection. And watch God do the supernatural. In and through and for your life. Amen. The fire is on the way back. Amen. I won't mind. Come on and stand on your feet. Amen. To give God a hand praise today. I wanted to challenge you for a handful of moments. Give God a hand praise. There's a return of apostolic fathers. But there's a shaking of the sons. Are y'all with me here? Your next assignment is about to be released because of what you're connected to. Are y'all with me? There are tried and true principles that don't change. Are y'all with me? Pastor Robert, how God deals with man changes. From dispensation to seasons, the way God deals with man changes. Who he is never does. Are y'all with me? He took his time to define himself as the God of Abraham. Isaac Jacob he ain't, that ain't what I do that's who I am that's how I define myself are y'all with me here he says at Jesus' baptism he said behold this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased this is what we do are y'all with me here you have to understand that the kingdom moves on the connectivity of generations things must be birthed cultivated raised and released into the earth anytime you circumvent that process you are not authentic are y'all with me here thank God for what you offer and bring to the kingdom I thank God I thank God that it's not what we've seen that is a whole different flow. It don't just empower us in church stuff. We had enough mothers in the spirit that taught us how to be good church women. How to put our sanctified hanky over our knees. Are y'all with me here? How many folk know you need a mother, a spiritual mother that know more than how to tell you to put your sanctified handkerchief over your knees if your skirt's short? Huh? And to wrap you up around the sheet when you're getting your shout on. Are y'all with me here? I need, I need somebody that can empower me in a kind of way that bring me to a whole level of wholeness that, that translate past spiritual things 
but even to life. Because God says, I give you everything that pertains to life and godliness. I need a total empowerment to be a better man, to be a better woman, right? Father, right? I need to be a better employee. Huh? Be a better neighbor. Start raising hell in your neighborhood. Come on here, somebody. Huh? Somebody brings a whole total empowerment. We are gifted. We celebrate all them degrees, apostles. They help us make us better than just getting our shout and praise on. Huh? I'm glad Catherine is empowering outside of church stuff. Come on here, somebody. I'm, 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 I'm closing. Impact. Let's receive the idea and the reality that God has positioned us to hold fast to tried and true standards. Not called up, not called away. I appreciate all, you know, the difference in how worship is. And there's a lot of traditions we really needed to throw away. Are y'all with me here? But there is a truth that God has created in the earth that we cannot abandon. It's the hearts of the fathers turn to their sons. And the hearts of the sons turn to their fathers. The very last statement I'm going to say, and then we're going to pray. If the, if the sons turned away from the fathers and the fathers turned away from their sons, God said, what well, caused me to smite the earth with a curse? Hmm? Is that the book? Am I making that up? He said, it will cause me to do what? Smite the earth with a curse. Well, if our disconnection causes the curse, come on here, somebody. I'll say it one more time for the people in the back. If the disconnection causes the curse, what happens? God, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you are a source of empowerment, a source of strength, but you have released for us empowerment in the earth. We thank you for the return of the spirit of Elijah, the great reformer. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us back, oh God, to a mark in time that we can understand the difference. We can understand the difference, oh God, between what we have experienced, oh God, that what the world has experienced, oh God, and know that there was an authentic manifestation of your spirit. We thank you for the return of fire. We thank you for the spirit of reformation. We thank you for restoring back, building back, bringing back upon the body of Christ true and authentic fire. Take us to the place that we readily testify. You need more than silver and gold. But what I do have, I'm going to give this to you. Amen. That we bring wholeness. That we bring empowerment and balance to the body. And that your people will move forward in the things that concern you. Thank you, Lord, for a spiritual leader that you have sent us. You've given us times in this moment to celebrate her. And we thank you for all that you are doing in and through her life. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, just again, give God praise for the man of God. Come on, praise God for the word. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, praise him. I feel a spirit of worship in this place. I feel a spirit of worship. I feel a, a release and an impartation of that word. Come on, just lift your hands and worship him all over this place. Hallelujah. Come on. The hearts of the fathers back to the sons and the sons back to the father. What a word. What a word. What a word. Come on. Just worship him. I'm trying to find myself in the spirit right now. I'm just trying to find myself in the spirit because I'm, I'm literally caught up standing up. Caught up standing up. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Just worship him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. That's it. Just worship him. Worship him. Worship him. I hear this in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I hear this in the spirit. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your presence. Here in your presence, Jesus.
There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your presence. Here in your presence, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your presence. Here in your presence, Lord. No place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your presence. Here in your presence, Lord. No place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your presence. Here in your presence, God. I feel that in my spirit. And then there's a part of that song, Pastor D. I don't know if you know it. It says, set a fire down in my soul. Can't contain, can't control. I want more. I want more. Of you. So set a fire down. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I know where I'm going. I know where that's at right there. That's what I'm hearing. Because God's ready to reset that fire. But you got to get connected. You got to get connected. You got to get connected. Come on, there's no place that you can get that fire from than getting connected. This word was profound, prophetic, and it was a rebuke even, I believe, correction to the body of Christ. I said to myself, the entire body needs to hear this message. The entire body because God is ready to release fire back into the earth and we want fire we want we want all of this power but we don't understand that God has basically he established order in how he brings his presence into the earth and Pastor Carlisle profoundly profoundly broke it down and he helped us understand that it's the spirit of the father and the hearts of the son that must connect in order to carry the authenticity of the power of God how many of you want that fire how many of you want that fire how many of you want that fire come on you got to get back under the, the, the I'm talking about the order of God get in the order of God yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, just worship him. I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm just, Pastor, thank you for that. That word was, whoo. You were in Apostle C in our conversation on our way to church. On our way to church, we literally had this conversation about being connected and about being, if you will, in order. And how God, literally how God births in the earth himself, himself. We can receive prophet Corey where, you know, many people say God does nothing in the earth except he first speaks to a prophet. But God does nothing in the earth except he births it through his order, through someone. Listen, God says that literally, literally it is through the lineage of God. The pedigree of God it's the lineage the father I'm talking about the hearts of the fathers Abraham Isaac and Jacob is how we get the glory even back into this present generation come on just lift your hands and worship him all over this place come on just worship him all over this place just worship him and the essence of that song even in the part where it says there's no place I'd rather be other than where God has set me where God has set me I don't care where everybody else is going I don't care what everybody else is running to there is no place I'd rather be than where God has set me because where he has set me is where I'm gonna get my oil is where I'm gonna get my oil and I decree and declare that God is moving us from a generation of information to a generation and a people of demonstration of his power it's no longer time for us to just be able to explain but cannot 
produce but it's time to produce what we've been teaching we have been teaching it but we haven't been able to produce it but God says I'm getting ready to bring a people into a place where you are not only going to be able to teach and preach and explain the Bible but you're going to be able to produce the Bible Woo! come on come on there's no place I'd rather be than where God sent me because that's where my oil is Jesus looked at his 12 he said where you two go <laughs> listen when, when you are married there's nowhere else to go come on there's nowhere else to go there's no other place to go and they told Jesus you have the words of life in your mouth and ain't nowhere else for me listen I know they all over there seem like that but this is where I'm set. Woo! And God's getting ready to do something amazing with the set people. Come on, just give him praise for that. Give him praise for it. Give him praise for it. Give him praise for it. Woo! What a word. What a word. You just, Apostle C, he just sets, he, you shifted us to go into this next season as we prepare even for the Father Conference. Woo, you almost preached yourself on the itinerary. It's like, my God. Apostle C, to me, he need my spot. I said, he need my spot. Woo, Jesus. What an amazing word. We honor you today, Pastor Carlisle, Apostle Carlisle. I'm telling you, that's apostolic. I'm telling you, I, I, I ain't no backing off on it because whenever the Lord puts this in my spirit that literally because we just saw the apostolic anointing and grace on his life and I'm telling you and he is a true son this brother I'm talking about this, he has for years years and, and, and he can teach what he taught because even through the years he has always been right there at the door Sometimes as a father, sometimes, you know, and I've had many spiritual fathers. Apostle Dennis only called me, I can recall out of all the years I set up on his ministry, he only called me twice. And each time he called me, he called me to rebuke me. <laughs> uh, come here, I need, I need to see you. It's like, oh shoot. What he done seen in the spirit. But I was always chasing after the oil on his life sitting at his feet not calling him saying listen why don't you call me and I say this in reference to you Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Carlisle listen I'd be like man I need to call Apostle Carlisle Pastor Carlisle I need to call him and just check every time I call he's in the same posture you don't have to sons you don't have to worry about where they are as a son myself I used to always tell Apostle and I didn't have to tell it but you know the people are always trying to explain to you where they are it's because they're not what they're trying to explain to you that they are. They're trying to figure it out. Pastor Matthew, the same way. I never had to explain where I was. They always knew where I was. Nobody had to. They knew where Newsom was. I'm there submitted in a posture, waiting, serving. Pastor Matthew didn't call me. But when he needed me, always there. And I was never just there for Apostle Dennis or Apostle Matthew based on what they were or how they did. I knew who I was and I knew who they were. I've been fathered all my life. My biological, my natural daddy, same way. I always knew who he was. I've all, and, and, and Apostle C said, I'm putting you on this conference because that's the part you're going to bring the father's advantage. I've always had the privilege. Apostle Dennis used to say to me, he said, you are solid, son. He said, you're the most stable person I've ever met. You're stable. He said, that's because you've been fathered. My biological, my daddy was always there. Always. Everywhere I turned, daddy was right there. Daddy's right there. My spiritual father's right there. I always knew. And you're talking about could walk in that power. I knew who I was, confidence. I could go in a room, praise God. I grew up, didn't have much of anything really, but I always thought I had everything. Come on. Didn't have to worry about fashion. This and I wore bobos and thought everybody should have bobos because of the confidence that the Father brings. 
always walked in it. Same in ministry. Same in ministry. Holy Ghost, I taught my sons this and I teach my sons this. Occupy the space that God gives you. I don't care where you are. I don't care who's there. I don't care what their name is, what they own. Listen, occupy the space. Know who you are. Go in with your head up. Come here and lift your voice and be heard. And that's, that's the grace of a father. But I said that to say, this is what God is doing. He's turning the hearts of fathers back to sons so you can walk in purpose and destiny. We only raise up sons. See, today in this particular, man, you preach so, and I'm not going to redo it, but I just feel the glory of God on this. And I need to just simply elaborate before we go into our worship of giving, because this man of God has really, he set, he set something in motion. And this is what apostles do. Jesus came on the scene. He said, you have heard, but I say, he shifted. You've heard this. They've taught this, but I say this. Let me shift you. You set something in motion today. But something that we have to understand that we must understand and learn. And that is literally we cannot succeed in the plan and the purpose for our life without being properly aligned. And in this generation, you have folk who raising up fans, raising up fans, but the people are fatherless. In other words, a father always, Jesus said, greater works shall you do. When God raises up sons, he raised you up to do more. A father wants you to do more. A father wants you to be greater. You preach it. You say you, you're raising up sons that can preach you. I'm talking about preach a circle around you. Teach a circle. This is what we do as fathers. We raise you up to do great things. And we're not jealous, envious. But our assignment is to raise you up and get out of the way and let the sons become the next generation of fathers. And I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm so pumped right now. I'm so pumped. So we celebrate. We celebrate God for this word. Apostle C, we celebrate you. We honor you. It's the same. It's the same. See, the spirit of the Father is genderless. Whenever God does something, gender is only related to our, if you will, purpose in the earth familially. Spiritually, the spirit of the father is the same as the spirit of the mother, if you will. But it is to give birth, give birth, it's to give birth. And I'm excited because truly, I believe that God has graced us with apostolic leadership, even in the person of Apostle Catherine. And I believe that as we continue to align ourselves and we continue to just simply align ourselves with God's grace as it relates to the spirit of the father, some of you get ready to see God do some things in your life and in your ministry and in your business that you basically have been waiting on. But now you've got a word that helps you properly align yourself for the next of what God is getting ready to do. If you receive that, just tell him thank you right now. I prophesy that some of you get ready to see double portion anointing. Come on here, when Elijah and Elijah, when they basically align literally uh, the, 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 the anointings and the miracles doubled. Some of you get ready to see a double portion because you get ready to get properly aligned. And I love it, I love it. Oh, I am so pumped up, I'm super excited. I'm thankful because literally I'm thankful. I'm thankful, Brother Core, because God, I'm telling you, he spoke to us today a profound word, and I'm just I'm just pumped up. Listen, we gotta give, we gotta sow. But Apostle C, you have basically heard God, even with this father's conference. I'm telling you that God spoke to her. He spoke to her and gave her this vision in this conference, and of course. You know, Impact, we partnered with her at Catherine Empowers. We're excited about bringing Apostle John in. He is truly, Apostle Eckhart is, I'm talking about a whoo, kingdom giant and, and just pioneer, even in this particular vein, apostolic fathering, etc. But I'm telling you, what we're getting ready to see, even in August, and what God is getting ready to do, I believe from June, he, he's he been in the vein of our meeting, wasn't he? Uh, 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 a Levitical team. What did I say Tuesday? We got to listen. Prayer, the word, and evangelism. We talked about it. We got to get back to the word. Who's hungry for the word? And I'm telling you, you preached the heart of God, and we're truly thankful. Impact Church Winston-Salem is truly blessed, and we're thankful that, glory to God, we're a part of what God is doing. Pastor Carlisle, Pastor Carlisle has been a part of our lives 
I'm talking about forever, forever. We not only uh, literally grew up in the in the same city and then just grew up together, but they went to Winston-Salem State, bless their hearts. And when I was privileged to, when I got finished with school, I moved to Winston-Salem and uh, we all came up through ministry and we all got, you know, in, into this fellowship of ministry and we grew together in the Lord and uh, pa pa Pastor Carlisle and I, we served, remember serving, man, we served and nearly fought, killed each other over pigs trying to raise money for the church. Glory to God. And we have been laboring for years, but I'm so proud to see what God is doing in your life. Profound teaching ministry. So we honor you today, sir. Listen, we're getting ready to give. Pastor Robert is going to prepare to come, but we're going to culminate our uh, month of honor and our month of celebrating the woman of God through seeding and sowing. Some of you may want to sow a special seed into her life or ministry. I want to encourage each of you to definitely, if you have not registered for that conference, the Father Conference, you do not want to miss this conference. And I believe, I've been talking to pastors. I've had pastors, we've been just talking and even apostles is like, man, and it's literally and, and I've been encouraging leaders because literally it's, it's, a, it's a conference for everyone. But leaders are literally uh, hearing the call of God on this conference. And they're like, man, I need to get in this conference because I think what God needs to do is deliver those of us who are in leadership so we can understand clearly our purpose to raise up sons and not build fan clubs. Not build fan clubs. And I'm not saying it because people cannot control how they become popular. I've watched uh, Apostle Matthew just grow from one place to the next, and it was like he became one of the most popular preachers you want to know, but walking with him and working and serving up under his ministry and leadership, it was never his intent, and his ministry was never designed to, so sometimes you can't help how people basically see you and your name and your ministry grows and God makes your name great. But then there are those who literally, they have plans and strategies to become popular, but they never really impart into the lives of those that are following and that are up under their ministry. And God says, I'm shifting that. I'm shifting that. I'm literally bringing you into a place to receive impartation. And I feel that in my spirit as a a powerful anointing that I feel right now and I even say this uh, uh, prophet Corey because God's gonna shift you as well you are a prophet but there's an apostle that's coming out of you you are a true apostle we'll talk about it but I listen this is my grace this is my assignment apostles uh, identify apostles and we raise them up but there's an apostle that's in you and that's who you are and you are, you're prophetic, you are a pro, you're a true prophet, but you're apostolic. And you're getting ready, and there's a season of shift where you're going to come into your true apostolic anointing. Because the word that's in your mouth, as he was teaching today, the Holy Spirit actually had me. And I didn't look down at you, but I literally, when he was preaching and teaching, I heard it in regards to you. That literally, that's you. That's you. Sometimes I watch you as you're engaging. On, so I'd be like, whoo, they, they got to get ready for this, brother. And literally, you engage the body with an anointing and grace to shift the body and you do it to a point where even sometimes I know uh, that the, the word that God gives you you know it's going this is going to upset some masses but you do it with such a grace and God says I'm literally raising you up to be an apostle to shift and adjust even as I just heard the Bible when I made reference to Jesus when he came on the scene and said you have heard that it's been said that a man should not commit adultery but I say that not only those who commit but those those who think on it or those who even in their mind or in their heart literally he shifted things you're gonna have that anointing to where you're gonna shift things where things that literally people have experienced in the church and the body have experienced they would have have basically experienced it but when you come God's gonna give you revelation and it's gonna shift I'm talking about whole houses it's gonna shift generations because of the apostolic anointing that's on your life and God says because you do not want fame and you do not want popularity God says you cannot even control what I will give you because I see the anointing of Solomon God says because you didn't ask for certain things I'm gonna give it to you anyway because of what you have a heart to do God says I'm gonna give you everything that you did not open your mouth to ask for you just simply want to do his 
his will. But God says, I'm going to raise you up and I'm going to cause men to know and see that not only am I with you, but that I am using you in a way that's going to cause even your name. You're going to hit a season where literally people are going to pull on you and they're going to be basically begin to put a demand on you. And God says, be selective where you go. Be selective where you go. Don't go because they call, but apostles go because they're sent. And God says, I'm going to send you where I want you to go. And when I send you, and when I send you, I'm going to not only go with you, but I'm going to prepare a people to receive from you that's going to shift entire generations. And God says, you are an apostle of the Lord, and I have been raising you up for some time. And God says, because you didn't ask, and because you're not coveting these things for your own glory, God says, I trust you with it. And I see extreme wealth. You have struggled in seasons to say, God, how can I do what you're even putting in me to do? Because you have basically have a heart as a provider, a husband. And I hear God saying, fear not. You have at times worried, even if you're doing those things right, will I be the father that I need to be to my children? Am I the husband I need to be to my wife? God says, I'm going to bless you even with wealth where you will not have to worry about certain things. And I'm going to give you a season where literally God says, I'm going to show you how I'm going to exit you off of even what I call conventional jobs and conventional work. And God says, I'm going to position you where you will lack nothing. You will miss nothing. But I am putting you in a place where I'm going to use you mightily all because of your heart's posture. Somebody ought to give God praise. Your heart's posture. Whew. I just apostolically activated two apostles right here today. Y'all ain't got to say, man, I know my assignment. Seman Sotai. Just did a commissioning in Missouri. Did a commissioning in, Missouri, in Missouri for 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 one of our dear friends and brothers, Apostle Kirkwood. And even as we were doing that, I just it's like man, the anointing and 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 it's not it's not often. And you don't do, listen, lay hands, nor do you open your mouth and announce these things uh, just because you you want to or can. This is the work of God. But I'm telling you, Apostle Kyle, and I've been it's been in my spirit. Uh, just to talk to you about this, but I'm telling you, God's going to do some amazing things. Y'all ought to just praise God for what he's about to do. No, everybody's not an apostle. No, everybody's not an apostle. We don't go around raising up. Apostle Dennis taught us well. Apostle Dennis, you, you say that God called you to be an apostle. Apostle Dennis tell you, all right, I'm going to give you some material. Read for a year and then call me back later. And again, apostle ain't calling you. Until then, and he, he, he would tell you to study and pray. And he said, don't just be raising people up in the apostolic anointing and making them glorified pastors with the title of an apostle. He said, because when you go into this realm, you open yourself up for demons. And if you don't have the grace to stand there, you're going to, as Pastor Carlisle taught, you're going to get whooped. And there is truly... There's a suffering that comes with the apostolic anointing. And when I say suffering, there's just simply, uh, uh, the, as he said, the adverse challenges of authority and, and Jezebel and them that come at you. And you got to be graced to fight Jezebel. And all of us have had our time of the juniper tree, haven't we? But I'm telling you, God is raising up powerful men and women of God, powerful prophets. I'm telling you, I'm excited. Listen, we are thankful. Pastor Robert is going to come. We get ready to worship God and not giving. Y'all hanging on in there? Whew, I feel this in my spirit. He done preached me happy. I'm ready to do ministry. This is this is what I do. Come on, I'm believing God. I'm believing God. Listen, I may not do a whole lot of preaching, but when it comes to ministry and when I open my mouth, I hear God. And when I open my mouth, there are things that I believe God is even now releasing, even over the lives of these men of God. Literally, there are things that are shifting right now in Winston-Salem. There are things that are shifting. There are people that God is waking up because of your anointing that you're getting ready to even walk in it on great you've been walking in it but even on a greater level heaven is already aligning people to walk with you in your apostolic anointing as well as apostle uh, listen and, and and this is the thing you can have multiple apostles in the same house come on Woo. multiple somebody said well if apostle Corey gonna be an apostle or what? 
what, what? And so he's a son, so I can speak that. The Bible said that Jacob said to his sons what were going to befall them. <laughs> so don't, don't be like, Lord, he ought not put that on Apostle, uh, Prophet Corey. Let that man hear God for that's my That's my job is to tell the sons what is about to befall you. And I'm telling you, God's getting ready to do it. And God will give him greater revelation. But I see that in the spirit. I'm telling you, we're getting ready to see, receive another son. I'm telling you, we're getting ready to go into some things. I'm telling you, we need to identify sons. And there are more than one kind of son. Absalom was a son. Hello? Absalom was a son. He was just a wayward son. Not all sons are good. But even in that, God is raising up sons, sons. And I even b believe that God is delivering folk from Absalom's spirit. I'm telling you, and Absalom became Absalom because of the alt he had against David, the father. Some of you got alts against your leaders. And basically, if you're not careful, you'll become Absalom because you will not allow yourself to be delivered and let go of something that offended you. I rebuke that devil now in the name of Jesus. I command that even the spirit of Absalom be free from the spirit of men and women who are true sons and before they become true Absalons God restore, deliver deliver so I'm excited, Pastor Robert who's a son he's going to come and lead us in our time of giving we're going to sow and seed, amen and we're going to get out of here, we're right on time too, let's clap our hands and receive him as he comes Hallelujah Hallelujah, can we just give honor and praise to Apostle Edwin Hallelujah. We thank God. What an awesome worship experience. What an awesome word. Pastor Carlisle, we thank you. We felt the shift. Amen. We felt the shift. You know, Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says, Remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that has given us power to get well. So as we take just the time, just take this time to worship God and our giving we don't want to forget the Lord and I know there's a lot of things going on Labor Day Memorial Day weekend excuse me cookouts graduations all that stuff going on and we know it takes money to do all that amen to buy the burgers and the steaks and gift here and gift there and gas to go here and gas to go there but let's not remember the, the source of the wealth let's not let's not forget it's God has given us the ability to make the money, amen. And we give God all the glory and the honor. But if it hadn't been for him, we wouldn't have the ability to make things happen, amen. So as we honor God in our giving, we just want to take this time to worship. The Bible says bring the tithe into the storehouse. Apostle, I want to say, you know, Apostle has been, you know, just laid this time aside to, to honor in this month, amen. As we as we as we've been if we've been teaching on honor, honor first comes from God. Because we have to honor him, amen. And he will just allow us to, to, to honor those that are around us. So we want to worship God. We want to sow. The Bible also says in Malachi to bring the tithe and the offering into the storehouse. So that's what we want to be found today. There's multiple ways to give. And then those that are here, you can give in person or along with those that are tuned into the broadcast. You can give online, you can text to give, and you can cash out. And again, throughout this whole month, we've been honoring and celebrating the woman of God, Apostle Catherine. On behalf of her, I just want to thank all of those that sold, that, give, that gave, amen. But if you have not had the opportunity or you say, hey, I want to give a little bit more. I want to put a little bit more sugar into what I'm going to do for her this, this, this month. We're, con we're culminating everything. But as we move forward, it's always uh, uh, it's, it's always uh, an opportunity to be a blessing to our leaders. Amen. So don't let this month be the only time that you sow into her life. And again, if you want to, to sow some more or you haven't had an opportunity to, I encourage all of you to give. Amen. There's a gift box right outside in the vestibule area. It's a red gift box that's locked. Sow your seeds into there as well. Amen. And you can also put it in her hand. Amen. It's just a blessing to be a blessing. Amen. And we want to continue to show our love for the woman of God. 
She is an awesome jewel, amen, to this house. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us stand as we pray on one accord. Amen. On one accord. Hallelujah. 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 God wants, God wants us to be good stewards of what he's blessed us with. There's work to be done. Amen. There is work to be done. But we have to position ourselves to stay loyal and stay committed to God's way. And it starts with the tithe and the offering. Oh, oh, let us pray. Oh, oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to sow and to give our gifts, Father. We thank you for every tithe, Father. We thank you for every free will offering, Lord. We even thank you, Lord, for those that are giving, Lord, to our building fund, Father, the vision campaign, Father. We thank you, Lord, for those that are sacrificing, that are giving, Lord, their seeds, God, to the vision of this house. Father, we also thank you, God, for those that are sowing into the lives of our leaders, those that are sowing into the lives of Apostle Catherine and, and Apostle Edwin, God. We thank you, God, and we just speak, Lord, blessings in their lives, Father. We thank you for what you're going to do, God, in our finances, Father. For you said in your word that we are the head and not the tail, that we are above and not beneath. And we speak, Lord, manifested glory, God, into our finances, Father. Allow us, Lord, to make an impact so that we can, Lord, get things done, Lord, for your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody in agreement say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're choosing to give in person, we're going to uh, ask you to come out from wherever you are and be led out by the floor attendants at this time. just want to hear Apostle Catherine's voice. Amen. I just want to, I just want to hear her voice. She doesn't have to say much. And I know Apostle Edwin is going to come back, I uh, think, to close out. But I just want to hear the woman of God. I mean, we are so honored that she's here with us. But a lot of times we take for granted, you know, her being here every day, you know, every every Sunday, every time we come in, in her in her absence, Amen. It's just been different, Amen. God has been here, but she is she makes such an impact on the service, Amen, and just in fellowship. So I'm so happy, happy that she is back, Amen, and just to have her presence with us, Amen. Can we stand to our feet one more time and let's give reverence and honor to the woman of God as she comes and we hear her voice. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. There is so much. There is so much that I can say. And I tell you, I've almost cried these lashes off today. I'm just grateful. I just, I just want to, um, I'm just really just lost for words, just trying to find the right words to say. So I'll just say thank you uh, for an amazing, an amazing month. Every speaker, starting with Apostle Vaughn, and then we had Prophet Jacqueline, and then we had Elder Katina. I don't know if she's still here. She's still here. And then we had um, Apostle Vaughn again uh, on last week. And what can we say about the culmination of the Word of God on today from a true son? We love Apostle Alvin Carlisle. That sounds so good. Apostle Alvin Carlisle, we thank God for him and Impact Church. Winston-Salem, but I, I'm not going to hold you long, but I, I do want to just say thank you, and it is just such a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord. I was telling somebody, it may have been Doretha or Antoinette or somebody I was telling, 
that I really needed this month. I re God knew what I needed. I asked the pastor, I said, are you sure? I don't think we need a whole month to, you know, don't, don't focus on me a whole month. I appreciate what you want to do, but God knew that I needed this. I needed the encouragement, every word of encouragement, every text message, every gift, even when I was not here and watching via Facebook Live, you're sending me my flowers at home, the cars, and you guys have really overwhelmed me, and I needed this. Um, only God and I know how much I needed um, this month of encouragement because it, um, yeah, I needed it. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I thank you so much. And I'm encouraged. I am encouraged. Everything that God has afforded me, every ounce of whatever he has given me, is so that I can give to you all and those who he called me to give it to. So I'm overwhelmed again, and I thank you. I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I love this church. I love this people. And I'm so excited about what God is doing in and through us. I thank God for Apostle Vaughn, who is such a gift to us. He's such a gift to us, and sometimes my heart, I'd be like, God, I just, I want so much for him and so much for this ministry. And I know God is doing it. He's going to do it, and he has done amazing things um, for us. So my heart is, again, is, is just overwhelmed. I am, I am encouraged, and I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I love you with the love of God. God bless each of you. God bless you. Woo. Come on, give her a hand of encouragement. Wow. Bless you, Apostle Catherine. And we are truly grateful that this month did what I believe God intended for it to do, and that is to know that you are encouraged. We're grateful. You know, I often say, don't do anything for me. And so-called, sometimes people will say they're getting ready to honor you. Uh, pastor, apostle, and it's like, where is it at? It's like, what y'all did, that didn't, didn't do nothing for me. Uh, I mean, put effort in it. Make me, listen, if you're going to say we're going to honor it, make me feel honored. Amen? I'm telling the truth. I'm telling you, I've, had, I've been doing this for a long time, and I have seen and go places. It's like we honor the past, and it's like, I don't know how. You just barely mention them, and it should focus. And so to know that we encourage your heart, we know that we were successful. We were successful. And I'm truly thankful uh, because I know that God spoke that to me. And I know when God speaks uh, something, and she's so humble because she did. She's like, a whole month. That's what he said. We're going to do what he said. We're going to honor you. And, and you know me, you are deserving. Amen. You are deserving. You are deserving. Glory to God. I'm telling you, saints, if you want to adopt a problem with me, just have anything like a problem with her. You got a problem with her, you got a real problem with me. I am a problem on two feet. If you got a problem with that sister right there. I'm telling you, because she is truly a blessing. So we are thankful. Impact, thank you for just all month. To all of the speakers, again, thank you, Prophet Jacqueline. Thank you to uh, Elder Katina. Thank you. And to Pastor Carla, Apostle Carla. Man, you just culminated it so well. And uh, so we're truly thankful for that. Listen, we know that there are a lot of things still going on, a lot of things still taking place. Memorial Day weekend. I know y'all got about three cookouts to hit three cookouts and uh so we're gonna let you go in just a moment thank you for indulging us into again pa uh, pa pastor carlisle's family we thank you miss sarah so good to see you i didn't recognize you but man, it's like well it's good to see you bless you bless you always good to see you and we are certainly grateful that those of you who took time out to be a part we are thankful that you came out listen we're getting ready to let you go we do want to remind you that we will again be in our midweek service on wednesday uh, we are having an amazing uh, soul care Wednesday is it's just been truly a blessing so I want to encourage you to come out and again we have been doing some teaching around the Word of God and so we got a whole new lineup to uh, introduce for June with things that we're doing and so it's gonna be um, a month we got some of these brothers gonna be up you know I'm going to put you out there uh, uh, Elder Core I gotta have you uh, listen it's just in my spirit and I know they like man this brother will put you up on the spot so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know which Sunday 
Amen. Truly a man of God with a word in his mouth. And we appreciate you guys being a part of our fellowship as well. And so I'm excited and uh, truly thankful. Nothing else. Pastor, we love you, man. We appreciate you. Oh, wow. Teaching this, man. This brother's been teaching for a long time. And I'm telling you, the curtain ain't been pulled. I know I say this every time I hear you teach. i like, man, I'm going to go back and pull the dog on curtain myself. Man. We got to get... The world needs to hear this, brother. Listen, I know, I know we have some what we call name brand teachers. It's like when you think of this man of God, when it comes to handling the word, I have not seen many who can handle that Bible. It'd be like, man, this guy right here is in the Bible and so profound, but yet simplistic, simplistic profoundness and I'm truly thankful so we love you man of God please share with uh, Pastor Stephanie our love uh, I don't share it I always share Impact Winston so while you was teaching I don't know on my timeline I got Impact Winston and Impact Goldsboro it's always on my timeline always on my timeline and so I thank God for her holding it down in Winston and so we're coming up there we have been basically you know and we haven't gotten up there properly yet but we're coming up because even as pastor, as he has he launched uh, Impact Winston, we've had great conversation. We talked. We uh, basically, you know, heard his heart and God gave us, you know, uh, wisdom and things. And he just went forth. And we've yet uh, even to get up and properly just, you know, put our two cent and just to stand with you. But I love what God is doing. And so we appreciate you. Nothing else. We're going to stand to our feet. Excited. Y'all excited? I'm truly thankful for everything. We appreciate uh, those who were uh, part last night. We had a great time of worship. Loved it. Appreciate it. Appreciate Pastor Dia and Abba's daughters. They ministered so profoundly as well through song last night and through worship. And we're going to do even more of what the Holy Spirit leads. I like to do what the Holy Ghost says, though. When Spirit leads us to do something, we go for it. But it's been a truly blessed week, and it's been a blessed month. And again, we are excited about what God is getting ready to do in June as well as in July. Again, I want to remind you that Apostle has a whole table set up out back. Go and take a picture even of her uh, accomplishments and her table that's just really highlighting some of the things that she has been blessed and, and, and grace to, to accomplish and achieve, but also visit her book table, her product table. And if you haven't gotten her books, again, they are profound. She's a teacher. So when you're reading her books, it's like you're sitting up under her teaching and she just lays it out so profoundly. So we encourage you to do so and uh, so into her life by purchasing the books as well as go to her website, register for the conference in August, we have, again, some amazing speakers. We have Apostle John Eckhart, who is the keynote speaker for two whole nights. We will have him. And then we have a day session on Friday with Dr. Faith Wacoma. Faith Wacoma. Wacoma. Uh, out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Another powerful apostolic gift, prophetic gift. And uh, we're just so thankful that she has consented to be a part. And it's going to be an amazing day where Apostle Catherine and myself also We'll be sharing in the day session, and we will be in the beautiful beautiful Embassy Suites right there in Raleigh, North Carolina, right around the corner from Raleigh-Durham Airport. So very, uh, very nice place, very accessible to everything. And so we look forward to seeing you guys there. Nothing else to keep us apostolically release you from this place today, but never from the presence of God to go out and impact the world. Remember, you're being built. You're being developed. You're being equipped so that you can go out and do the work of the ministry. And I decree and declare the blessing of the Lord upon you today in Jesus' name is our prayer. Listen, remember to tell somebody about Jesus and let your light shine all over this place. God bless you. Hug somebody, love somebody. If you are hugging, remember we are respecting people who still want to be a little distant in the social distancing, but you are dismissed. We love you with the love of God. <laughs>